Writing a literature review can be an extremely overwhelming task, especially if you are a student. So in this video I want to take you through three steps that will enable you to do your literature review quickly. So the three steps that I want to discuss include first doing lots of reading, then organizing that material and then sitting down to write your literature review. So step one, unfortunately there is nothing you can do about it and there is no way around it. You have to do plenty of reading. So obviously as you know the requirement is that you have to, in your literature review, you have to demonstrate a very uh, good knowledge of the literature. That's the whole point of your literature review. Uh, and in order to do so, you will have to do a lot of reading. Uh, the only thing that can be done about it, and this is uh, what I always uh, recommend and suggest doing, is to focus mainly on reading academic articles. So rather than reading books, you want to read academic articles. Because they are short, so they are obviously uh, quick to read, uh, you'll have easier access to lots of articles so you because you can download download lots of articles you can use uh, these articles each article as a springboard uh, to explore the topic further so as you see uh, a given topic being discussed in the article then you go to the reference list at the end and you download or ga gain access to that article so you can use each article as a springboard and you can quickly move uh, from one article to another quickly explore the topic and gain more and more knowledge in that topic and as i already said at the end of each article there is this nice little section called references which is a great which is literally a gold mine for uh, exploring more and more references so you'll be able to uh, gain quick access to lots of materials if you focus on reading academic articles. Of course I'm not saying not to read any books. Sometimes there is a very good book, sometimes it's a very narrow topic and it specializes uh, in your topic and it's an amazing book. Uh, in that case of course it is worth reading a book. Uh, but for the purpose, as I said, of exploring generally the area of your investigation, of getting to know as many uh, possible uh, studies that have been conducted to date, uh, it is best to focus on articles. Also, they are always up to date and uh, they are new. So again, you will uh, be able to talk about uh, research that is up to date and this is very important as well. Now, step two involves organizing that reading. And although I refer to it as step two, uh, which follows the previously discussed step one, in practice you want to apply this step at the same time as you are doing the reading. So don't wait till, uh, till you're done with your reading. You're going to read a lot, as I said, and after a while you'll, you'll start inevitably start to forget things, forget what you have read about. So after the fifth or tenth article, you won't remember what you have read about. You'll know, you'll kind of know these important things, this, these interesting insights. You'll remember there was a study that explored something or there was a study that used interviews to explore something, but eventually you will start forgetting where you read about these things. So it's absolutely crucial to start organizing that knowledge very early on. So organizing whatever you are reading about. And what I usually do is I uh, start a several uh, empty uh, documents, empty word documents. Initially, when I have my uh, articles, academic articles in a PDF format, what I do is I create a Microsoft Word document for uh, each of these articles and then I copy and paste the most important things uh, from the article. So whatever I believe is important. Of course, eventually my uh, reading will become more and more focused because I will start to develop a better idea of what I need to read about. But initially I just uh, copy and paste everything I believe is important and this includes a theoretical uh, considerations, so maybe the definitions of the terms that I'm interested in, as well as interesting examples of previous studies or uh, parts of the methods sections, because of course you are also thinking about your research design. So you may want to copy the uh, interesting descriptions of uh, methods or maybe why uh, certain sampling procedures were applied or anything that's important to you. You want to uh, copy and paste into that Microsoft Word document and indicate the page number from your PDF file. 
And now I know that you can highlight uh, these things in the PDF file, but the problem is that once you have five or 10 PDF files or 15 or 20, you simply won't remember uh, which ones uh, were marked with, these, uh, with this highlighting option. Uh, so you'll still have to open each file and scroll through them, uh, through the file. So it doesn't make sense. It's much better to create a little summary, uh, as I said, so a little text document for each of your PDF uh, academic articles uh, and just copy and paste whatever's important. In a later stage, as my reading becomes more and more focused and I become more and more aware of the topic, I have better and better understanding of the topic and also of what I need to read about, what I usually do is I create uh, create uh, another couple of Microsoft Word documents, but this time I uh, I create one uh, for each uh, separate topic that I'm interested in. So imagine that I'm studying uh, self-esteem, uh, for example, I may create a, a Word document called self-esteem. Another Word document may be called methodology or maybe interviews. Uh, and what happens next? Uh, now that I have all these uh, separate Word documents for each of my academic uh, articles in a PDF format, what I want to do next is from each of these uh, Word files, documents, I want to copy and paste the content to one of the newly uh, created uh, files that represent a given topic. So if I have a file, a new file that says self-esteem, uh, now I will copy and paste all the important quotes that I previously collected that refer to self-esteem from each of the articles, so from each of my previous Word documents. Now I know that it may sound like a lot of work, but really this isn't that much work. And believe me, if you don't do that, it will be much more time consuming to have to go back to each article and scroll it and look for things. This way you're creating little summaries first, so you don't really have to open the PDF files anymore. And this in fact is uh, true in my case, so hardly ever do I even have to open the, the original file after that. So okay, so again we are at the stage where we have created these separate files. So again, initially when you create a separate file for each article, uh, you want to copy and paste every important or interesting quote, you want to indicate the page number for the future if you want to uh, provide a, a, a citation or quotation for your work. And also sometimes I make some notes, so I may justify in brackets for myself why I included this uh, this little quote. So I may say uh, anything like a note to myself, so I may say have a look at this study or maybe uh, maybe I should consider using similar approach, so anything, any notes to myself. Or sometimes just I just separate the topics, so like I said in the brackets I will say uh, self-esteem or definitions of self-esteem. Uh, it depends on your approach, what you do, how you uh, create these notes. But later on, as I said, the next step is you are creating three or uh, whatever the number, so new separate files, uh, this time organized uh, thematically, so organized by the topic that you need for your study. So one of them can be about group work, another one can be about theories of language learning, and now you're copying and pasting everything from uh, each of your uh, previously created uh, text files. This time you have to indicate the page number and the source, so where which article the quote comes from. So as a result, what you have now uh, are a, a few separate documents that have uh, every quote that uh, you believe is important on a given topic. So everything you have read about. So this time, uh, this way you may have a, uh, a file that contains uh, everything that you believe is useful about methodology, so of course you'll use it especially later, and this forward thinking, future thinking will help you as well. So as you're reading the articles, you want to start making notes about methodology because eventually you will have to also talk about methodology in your study. In another file, as I said, you may have all the quotes about group work, in another file all the quotes about self-esteem or uh, theories of language learning. So everything you have read is there. So you don't have uh, to scroll through each article anymore. And you have them all nicely organized. And now you're ready for step three, to write your literature review. Again, there is a strategy that I use. Uh, I know that it's extremely overwhelming and uh, discouraging to open a new file, a new uh, text document, 
look at it at this blank document and realize that you have nothing literally nothing and you need to write your whole dissertation uh, it doesn't really help to introduce uh, to put a single heading there either so to say introduction or literature review uh, actually it's even sometimes it's even more upsetting because you're looking at this thing that is going to be or supposed to be a literature review but it's completely empty completely blank so what do i do about it i start with planning the general outline of my literature review surely you have some kind of an idea by now what you want to discuss in your literature review i recorded other uh, videos on this topic and i also recorded uh, a self-study course on how to develop research topic in that course i also talk about literature review in a little bit more detail so you may want to uh, check that course if you're interested uh, but briefly speaking your literature review should be telling a story so it should develop from introducing the topic to the reader uh, through discussing the previous studies showing what has been done uh, to eventually uh, this point where uh, the reader is ready to read about your methods so by the end of the literature review i should know what your topic is i need i need to clearly understand why it needs investigating and i need to already be able to guess what you are going to do in your study so to achieve this of course you have to have some kind of an outline so perhaps you want to start with an introduction some background maybe definitions uh, then uh, somehow categorize the existing studies and go through these existing studies uh, and then gradually develop towards the rationale so the gap maybe uh, in research so whatever the rationale is so develop towards the reason why we need your study this is a very very general uh, outline of course of a literature review but the point is that as i have this outline in my mind what i like to do at this point is to uh, in my empty document I like to introduce uh, insert all these headings so I want to uh, even though they will be empty at the moment but rather than inserting the first heading say introduction and trying to write an introduction I first want to have every single heading from my future literature review so I'll, I'll put uh, chapter 1 literature review then I'll say 1-1 one, one, introduction and perhaps 1-2 let's say uh, self-esteem 1-3 identity, 1-4 previous studies of learner attitudes, and, and so on and so forth. So I want to have this list, I want to have every single heading in my Microsoft Word file. And this is important for several reasons. The first reason is that is a psychological, so to speak, reason. So as I said, I think it's much more encouraging to see that you have some kind of a structure in place uh, at, the, at the time when you are beginning to write, rather than seeing this completely empty document and the second reason and this reason is extremely important is the most important reason is because uh, the next thing you you want to do at this stage is to open your files with all the quotes remember you have your files with all the quotes about self-esteem all the quotes about methodology all the quotes about identity you want to open these files now and you want to distribute these quotes among the headings that you currently have so so you have your empty sections and now you want to start taking copying and pasting all the relevant quotes from the articles that you found into each of these uh, sections so you will end up with having this working uh, version of your thesis of course nothing in the sections is yours at the moment this is just copied and paste uh, pasted stuff from the articles but it doesn't matter because it will give you an idea it will give you some quotes to use it will give you something to uh, to uh, restructure and reward and rephrase but overall you'll have some material to work on so again so you end up having this uh, section let's say on definitions of uh, self-perceptions and then you copy and paste everything all the definitions that you previously found and copied and pasted into another file and then in your section say 1.4 you have previous studies of uh, learner attitudes you will copy and paste everything from your file about uh, learner attitudes so all the quotes from the articles that you read you'll put them there so once you're done you'll end up with a document that is probably actually a couple of pages long as opposed to this empty document that i mentioned which again already gives you 
uh, hopefully some confidence and uh, and some comfort and then you can start writing so then uh, again probably one section at a time so maybe one section a day or maybe a section for you know two or three days depending on what kind of section it is and how long it's supposed to be you will want to start writing so you have this all the uh, material you don't have to look uh, through your articles anymore you don't have to do reading you don't have to look for quotes because they are all there so so basically now you're just focusing on one section at a time ideally you may have some outline as well some plan for it but uh, this is the idea i found this strategy to be extremely effective extremely useful uh, in my own work in my own studies uh, i have another video on this channel about a writing literature review there are some similar strategies i believe but you may want to watch that video again as i said i have a self-study course in which i talk about developing uh, a research topic or dissertation topic so i also focus much more on where exactly to look for articles what to read which sections of articles to read uh, which sections to pay attention to so uh, i go into much more detail in, uh, of how to develop a dissertation idea so you may want to explore that course as well and if uh, you're enjoying this content uh, consider subscribing to this channel turning the notification the bell icon on and liking this video